Joining me right now on Kumite Radio, he's back on the show. The guy in the center of the ring. You've seen him on Road FC, ACB, and most recently, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Jeff Houston, what's going on? John, my man, what's happening, man? Kumite Radio in the house! Thank you, thank you. Uh, now, I wanted to have you on. Number one is because of the bare knuckle boxing scene that is growing, that is percolating. Can you talk about that? Percolating? It's like a rocket up, up the ass. It's just ridiculously huge right now. I had a very good feeling about bare knuckle when um, I was approached on it. And the first show, I said, this is just going to be bigger than big because it is the right time for bare knuckle boxing to come into mainstream into mainstream sports and the reason that is is it's the same principle as when the UFC started when the UFC started there was nothing like it there was nothing like it and people at first were like oh it's brutal you know it's you know it, it may last but then when it got structured and rules and weight classes and such and then it became the global phenomenon that it is but as you know the UFC you know it's getting very diluted because it's become uh, a, a brand, a franchise, rather than a, than a sports promotion. So because of that, it's just available everywhere, and there are so many fights that people have to pay attention to these days. And boxing, as you know, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that it's abysmal. I'm just saying that the boxing world is changing. You know, it's no longer that, you know, HBO boxing, you know, off the air after 40 plus years. And, you know, there's no pound for pound king in boxing right now either. There's not a major draw because, you know, you saw the last fight between Canelo and Golovkin. I mean, that did 1.1 million pay-per-view buys. That's not good for a major title fight, a number two fight for them. So I think that bare knuckle, the timing, it's, it's, it's perfect. It's exactly the time that people are ready to see something different. And it's so exciting. It's brutal, yes, because it's bare knuckle. I mean, you know, you can't sugarcoat that, but it's not barbaric. These are world-class athletes that are getting involved with bare knuckle fighting championship, and they're loving it. They're like kids in a candy store when they get in the squared circle. It's awesome, man. What is the atmosphere like live? Because, you know, most people that watch MMA, they kind of dabble in the bare knuckle boxing, but most of them have probably never been to the event what is it like when you get it when you get in there and you're you know Kate or ringside watching this thing? It's so easy to say cage because you know so much MMA so we automatically go to cage instead of ring. But um, uh, another th it's it's a feeling unlike anything that I've ever experienced. You know, I it, it, it's not equal to it's it's not equal to bare knuckle and or I mean excuse me MMA or boxing. It's actually above. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, a a more sense of just heightened excitement and electricity because this is so different because you also have to think about the athletes that are involved because the athletes have to be so much more intelligent with their punches when you don't have 14 ounce gloves four ounce gloves and tape on your hands you've got to be very smart about what kind of punches that you throw because a bad punch could end up being your last one on that hand and that hand gets broken and you know, you were talking about the uh, the atmosphere, the weigh-ins at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship are some of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Because you know what, most weigh-ins for MMA or boxing, usually there's a tussle somewhere. Somebody gets up in somebody's face and there's a shoving match and almost looks like a fight's going to start right there and then on the stage. These are the most calm weigh-ins I've ever been a part of. And I think maybe one of the reasons is, is because the athletes are wrapping their heads around what they're getting themselves into. Because it's very different. 90% of these guys have never fought bare knuckle uh, professionally. So I think that, that it's just a sense of getting your head around stepping into the ring unprotected. And it's just so different. But the atmosphere, oh, it's unlike anything I've ever experienced in 15 years of announcing. It's awesome. You Do you consider this the purest form of combat? I think that it is... the. I don't I, to be the purest form of combat already, um, not yet. And the reason I say this is because it's in its infancy. It's so new. You know, there's no superstars that have been come out 100%. We've got we've got upcoming stars. That's for damn sure. Oh my God, Rowdy Beck Rawlings. 
man, she is the queen of bare knuckle now. You know, the last event that we did, uh, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 2 in Biloxi, um, she uh, defended the Police Gazette Diamond Bare Knuckle Women's Championship, and the Police Gazette belts are the oldest championship belts in combative sports history. In fact, the belt that uh, was at ringside, courtesy of Mr. Scott Burt, who is the president of the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame, had not been ringside at a fight in 129 years. That's how, I mean, that's that, that's that's the history behind this belt. And to see them resurrected in this form is incredible. But getting back to your question, I believe it will be the most purest form of combative sports. But it's got a lot of growing to do. It still does. Now, you're talking, to, you just mentioned the queen, Beck Rowling. <laughs> now, what about the men? Who is the number one star right now for the men? We are going to find that out on October the 20th because October the 20th is the final match of the Bare Knuckle Heavyweight Tournament. And the winner of that will be crowned uh, the undisputed uh, Police Gazette American Bare Knuckle Heavyweight Champion. And it's between two fantastic fighters that have been awesome in this tournament this far. We've got Arnold A.J. Adams out of Chicago, Illinois, who has just been... Wow. I mean, he, he he just has hands of steel. I mean, it's like cinder blocks with fingers. It's just awesome. And he just qualified for the finals. And then we've got probably one of the most charismatic um, bare knuckle fighters I've ever seen in my life. And that's Sam, the hillbilly hammer shoemaker. And he's out of a place called Gravois Hills, uh, Missouri, and very, very small uh, city. Very, very small. It's, act you know, but um, he... You know, on our first fight that we had, where he went to get one up against uh, Eric Prindle, one punch knockout in the in, in the first couple of seconds of round one, a haymaker that he threw from heaven to hell, more like hell to heaven actually, came over the top. I'd never seen anything like that in my life, and this guy has just got star written all over him. It's 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 an amazing matchup. I cannot wait. But those are going to be your two. Um, candidates. But as far as the king right now, well, in my opinion, the undisputed king of bare knuckle is uh, Bobby Gunn. Because Bobby Gunn has got the record to back it up. He's 73 and 0 with 73 knockouts in the bare knuckle boxing world. And nobody has a uh, record like that. It's, it's, it's unchallenged as of right now. So as of right now, Bobby Gunn is the, uh, is the man. So is Bobby Gunn going to come over and challenge for this title after the champion is crowned? I would assume so, that he is going to be a title contender probably pretty quickly. Uh, is it going to be, is he going to be the next challenger? I'm not sure. Um, I, nobody said anything about that. Do I see Bobby in the running right away? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, he currently has a world championship. So he does not have the American championship. So he's the Police Gazette world bare knuckle um, boxing champion. So, yeah, I could see him probably, you know, contesting for that and actually having dominance over world titles and uh, American titles. Yeah, I think so. All right. Now I want to go back to Beck Rawling. She has been the face <laughs> of the promotion. She has she done is. very well for herself after yes. being released by the UFC, jumping head first or jumping fist first into the bare knuckle boxing scene how mm. big is it to have someone like her who has a background you know fighting in the ufc uh, a long history of combat sports to be in the forefront of this promotion i'm gonna give a nice little saying she is a glove fit in a world with no gloves <laughs> <laughs> that's what she is for bare knuckles she has a glove fit in a in a ring with no gloves um she is uh it, we, we are so proud of Beck and what she has done uh, as an ambassador for this brand new sport. I, she has just taken to it like a fish to water. It's just amazing seeing her transition from MMA to the squared circles, we like to call it. Oh, and also, um, we also have one of the most unique and original fight platforms called the Squared Circle, which you've seen uh, on Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. We have a ring and a fighting platform that's unlike 
any other I've seen. And the way that it's designed, it's not only designed to give the, the fighting viewers the best view possible for the fight, but it's really there to protect the fighters. And it's not your traditional ropes. It's, it's, it's much more tightly wound and it's a, a smaller compacted fighting surface. It's what I like to call close quarters combat. And for a bare knuckle, you don't need to run. This is not a fight about running. This is not get on your bike and hope they don't they don't catch me. Nope, nope. This is toe the line and knuckle up. And that's exactly what it's about. But Beck has just been an amazing ambassador. She has nothing but good things to say. Her promo work is, is improving by leaps and bounds. It's like she was made for the sport. Uh, we couldn't be happier. And she's a wonderful representative as our Police Gazette uh, women's champion. Yeah, bare knuckle, it seems like you're taking it back to the original, you know, before boxing even had gloves, guys would go toe to toe. When people look at it and they're like, oh, there's a lot of blood and, you know, a lot of, a lot of blood, you know, because once you hit those knuckles on that face, you know, it's easy to get a cut. So yeah. how do you kind of get people to look past the blood? Blood is one thing. Permanent injuries is another. A lot of people get kicked past the blood, and just because there's blood doesn't mean that there's serious injuries. I mean, that's the way that the epidermal layer works. You puncture it, it's going to bleed. It's just the way it's going to work. It's, you know, it's, it's simple biology. But what we're looking at more than surface abrasions is, you know, broken hands, because that's what our fighters run the risk of the most, because there's no protection there. I mean, you know, there are other bare knuckle associations throughout the world that actually have tape across their knuckles, but that's not true bare knuckle. That's not true bare knuckle. No, our tapes, our tape stops right about here. So you've got an inch of nothing but raw, determined bare knuckle aggression. And the, the abrasions are a little bit tough because, you know, um, this last um, heavyweight tournament final fight was uh, AJ Adams and Joey Beltran. And... You know, Joey got really cut up in this one, as he did the first show that he did. And I think he had about five surface abrasions on his face. So, you know, I mean, he bled a lot, you know, he, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's, you know, barbaric or brutal and such. I'm like, but everybody's epidermal layer, their skin layer is different. You know, you could hit on somebody who has like really, really tough skin and they won't bleed all day. But then again, there are other people who just, it, it, it all depends on that. And I don't, um, I don't think it's a bad thing, actually. I'm looking more for permanent injuries, broken hands, uh, broken orbital sockets, you know, things that are really going to impede the way that you live your everyday life. You can get over cuts. Cuts will heal. Cuts will heal. And that's what I say to uh, the fight fans who are a little bit leery about bare knuckle boxing because of the blood. Cuts will heal. You've been to every show since the the birth, or let's say the rebirth of bare knuckle boxing. Do you recommend it to people all the time? And how do you recommend it to them? Because a lot of people will be kind of standoffish about it. Standoffish? I recommend it with jazz hands. <laughs> I get jazz hands out when I talk about bare knuckle. Come on. Let them be hesitant. Anybody's going to be hesitant about something that they don't immediately understand. And it's really about bringing awareness of the sport to the fight fans that are, you know, steeped in MMA, steeped in boxing, you know, that's what they like, that's what they know. They see this, they think it's going to be glorified street fighting. They think it's going to be ham and eggers, you know, like uh, Kimbo Slice YouTube fights. I promise you, it's the furthest thing from that. These are world-class athletes that have had UFC backgrounds, Bellator backgrounds, World Series of Fighting, Ryzen. I mean, they've been on those top stages and a lot of them maybe you know and yes we are dealing with people that have retired but are willing to come back and try bare knuckle i mean the last fight we had chris lights out lytle come back from retirement to come and have a bare knuckle and he was amazing he was just amazing we got joe riggs we got joe diesel riggs coming back actually for uh bare knuckle fighting championship three so we've got a lot of guys who their MMA run has gone, but you also have to understand with MMA fighters, you're dealing more about a complete and total body fighting experience. Grappling, legs, elbows, 
core strength. There's so much that's involved with MMA that takes years off of a fighter's life. But with bare knuckle, if you decided to retire from MMA but give bare knuckle a chance, if you were a decent striker, then you could actually do something with yourself and become synonymous in a brand new sport. And it is brand new. That's why I'm so excited. And that's why I'm – look at my face. I mean I'm, I'm, I'm a second away from sweating all over the damn place. And the reason is is because I'm so excited and the rest of the world should be too because this is – it, it's an unbelievable feeling being in that atmosphere and watching it. I mean, you know, it's a twenty nine ninety five pay-per-view, which, you know, anybody can afford. And we've got fantastic people on there. I mean, you know, we've got um, on combat, you know, we, we've got we've got so many people that are involved, you know, from top levels of combative sports working with bare knuckle fighting championship. We got Sean Wheelock former Bellator extraordinaire and karate combat commentator who's on there. We, we, we've got so many people that are involved. Uh, see, look at me. I'm almost, I, I, I'm fighting for words because it's just that amazing. I have, seriously, John, I have nothing but amazing things to say about this. I'm excited to be at the forefront of a new era of combative sports. I really am. Yeah, you do definitely Dude. have you know, big names from mixed martial arts like Joe Riggs, Chris Lytle, Beck Rawling, crossing over and bringing a lot of fans over with them, you know, their followings. And it helps a lot to grow the sport much more quickly because when you look at the beginning, the birth of MMA, there was no fandom crossing over. It's either you liked it or you didn't like it, right? So bare knuckle well, boxing is starting in a different way. Well, with, with, with UFC, because mixed martial arts didn't exist, you had some people that were synonymous in specific martial arts techniques. You know, I mean, you know, you had people that were known throughout different martial arts competitive organizations, which was basically, you know, karate, kickboxing, grappling, grappling, you know, at the time in 1993. I mean, you know, when the Gracies came around, people were like, who are these guys in pajamas think they're doing in a violent sport being nonviolent? And as you know now, I mean, you know, there's not a fighter out there that doesn't have Brazilian jiu jitsu in his arsenal. So it's. It's just different, but yes, we are. We do have a leg up on that. It's because we're using, you know, established athletes from the most popular brands of combative sports in the world, and we're giving them an opportunity to be a star in something that's brand new. And I have yet to come across a fighter that wasn't like a kid in a candy store when it came to bare knuckle. They love it. They love it because it's so different, and they know that this is just going to take off. And it is, it is, but we're only three shows in. So it, it's, it, it's going to take years. It's going to take time. It's, you know, to get that fan base, to get people behind it, to get every state. But the one thing that I like about it the most is because bare knuckle fighting championship now has state sanctioning behind it when it comes to certain states, because people are always saying, Oh, you know, bare knuckle boxing was illegal. I'm like, not really, not really illegal because, you know, in the States, there were, um, you know, Indian reservations and casinos that actually had bare knuckle fights, you know, there. And as I'm not sure if you know, but on the Indian reservations, you know, they have their own athletic commissions. So they don't have to bow down to any of the state athletic commissions, but they're not state sanctioned and that's what made bare knuckle fighting championships so unique is because Wyoming was the first state to get behind us and say, you know what? This is going to be big and we're behind it. And now we have now we have Mississippi because now we're going to be doing it in Biloxi. And this is our second time in Biloxi and states are just going to be jumping on. You have no idea, John, how many fighters are contacting bare knuckle via the website and turning in fight applications. They want to be a part of this. Yeah, I feel that bare knuckle can grow internationally much quicker than MMA has. It seems like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it already ha there's already little scenes that have been going on around the world. Are, are there plans for you guys to kind of, you know, bring in these fighters, these uh, athletes from other countries? To oh, fight? there's always there's always plans. There's mm -hmm. always plans. Whether or not that I have something to announce right now. Mm -hmm. No, 
But there's plans, of course. I mean, and there's plans for us uh, internationally on top of that for us to go to different countries and bring bare knuckle fighting championship. So the, the, the possibility for this promotion is endless. You know, I mean, you know, I told you 15 years doing this and I mean, I'm excited for all the major organizations and the organizations that I represent. But I guess that I'm triple excited for this one because of the fact that it's at the beginning is that you can you can put your stamp on this professionally and say, I was there. I was there when the next big thing touched down. All right, Jeff, what is your schedule for the rest of the years? You know, we want to know where you're going to be. So, you you know, you have worked with Road FC, ACB. Is there other promotions you're working with? Uh, I've got a few things in the works. Um, as uh, most of the ring announcers know, uh, shows start to dwindle at the at the later part of the year. Uh, everybody's getting closer to the holidays, and you know promoters are starting to think about the next big schedules for 2019. So, of course, we've got Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship three, uh, October the 20th in Biloxi, and then uh, I've got Road FC 50, which is going to be in Dijon, uh November the third. And uh, then I have got ACB 90, which is going to be at the Moscow Ice Palace in Moscow on November uh, 10th. And Road FC is probably looking to do a show uh, at the end of December. And I'm not sure if uh, Bare Knuckles is going to do something in December. There's talks about it, so I'm not sure. And I've got um, I've got some things in the works with some big promotions, but uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss that now because no ink has dried on uh, any kind of contracts yet. But um, I'm going to be honest. Uh, 2018 has been great. You know, I've gotten I've gotten to go to nine different countries just this, this year alone, and it's just been an unbelievable trip this year. And 2019 is going to be even better because that's when bare knuckle opens up the floodgates when it comes to uh, events and uh, consistency. And that's what you're really going to see from bare knuckles. You're really going to see this consistency because the promoter, David Feldman, believes in this product with every fiber in his being. This is something that he's been wanting to do for decades, and he finally has a platform. Do you know that Dave, here, this is gonna be interesting. I never, a lot of people don't know this, but do you know that Dave Feldman was turned down from 28 state athletic commissions for bare knuckle before Wyoming said yes? Talk about, I mean, I mean you, know, you know, talk about determination. Persistence. Persistence and determination and saying this is not acceptable. I have a vision and somebody, damn it, is going to get behind it and champion it. Wyoming was the first one and we were so, so lucky that the first one was an unbelievable success. It could not have gotten it could not have gone any better. And because of that, other states are like, you know what? We're getting on board. We're getting on board. This is the future. There's no doubt, Jeff, you are the fastest rising ring announcer in the world. Like, you have put yourself in such a short period of time into, in my opinion, the top three announcers in the world. It's it's incredible that you have done this. Uh, I respect you in what you're doing, man, and, uh, and you're going all around the world, which is a very big benefit for someone, right? Well, there are worse ways to make a living. That's for absolute damn sure. But, you know, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't shoot up at all. I was very lucky, um, you know, for the for a ver for the majority of my career, because I started in 2003 and I started off as an independent pro wrestling pro, uh, announcer and then worked my way up to boxing and MMA. And it wasn't until 2011. So that's eight years in that I got a, a real televised opportunity with the Maximum Fighting Championship in uh, Canada, which is now defunct. Um, and, you know, then it kind of, you know, started, you know, doing better. I started doing some ESPN, some Showbox, you know, I've, you know, done some stuff with Showtime, Golden Boy and, you know, other various promotions. And Road FC, I mean, Road FC was really the one that really started putting me out there because, you know, you know, one day I'm just sitting at home, you know, I think this was 2000. Yeah, this was 2015. This was October 2015. So almost three years ago, sitting on my couch, you know, having a regular day, I get a call on my phone and it's a Korean number. I'm like, hmm, what kind of scam is this and everything? Who am I going to have to hang up on? And it was a representative from Road FC that had come across my information and said that we would like to invite you. It's now, mind you, it's Wednesday that they call me. 
we'd like to bring you out for Road FC. Can we get you out here by Friday? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go. I'll do a turn. I'll do a turnaround international flight. So I went out there and I did Road FC 26. Um, you know, in Seoul at the Jongchung Arena, and the rest is history, man. Three years on, and you know, I'm loving it, and you know. ACB was really cool because, you know, uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, world famous MMA referee extraordinaire, Herb Dean, actually referred me over to ACB. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's how that actually got started in February. And, you know, Bare Knuckle came along in June. And, you know, I've got three wonderful major promotions that I'm working for. I know I've got others that are going to be in the wings pretty soon. So there's sky's the limit. And I'm excited, man. I'm only you know, I turned 41 this December, and I still feel like a kid. I, I I could do this easily into my 70s or 80s, and I hope to. Well, thank you for your time, Jeff. And uh, you better everybody that's watching catch Jeff on October 20th, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship three. Thanks, Jeff. Not a problem, man. Kumite Kumite Radio, man. This is where it's at. This is where John asks the fighters the right questions at the right time. John's the man. Thanks, man.